Don't I know you, sir? Don't believe so. I haven't been here in many years. Name's Silas Greaves. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? Used to be. Ah, well, what are you doing here in Abilene? Just passing through. Got a little business to take care of. Well, sir, it would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer. Hell, son, it would be my honor to drink it. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true? Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? Is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. First man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? Damn right. That scrawny son of a bitch had no fear. Wouldn't back down for nobody. I heard he collected the tin stars off any crooked lawman who crossed him. It was a war, boy. The Lincoln County War. And Billy promised his regulators would take the life of every bastard who helped bushwhack John Tunstall. Kid had a big chip on his shoulder and a hair trigger temper. Made him dangerous as hell. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinking Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that some bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I was heading back to the hideout when suddenly I had this funny feeling. Funny, ha ha? No, Steve. The other kind of funny. You heard that. You need to stay here and keep an eye on the road. That's not fair. We're missing all the fun. I knew those two morons would never let me through. I had no choice. Shoot that some bitch! Was it Pat Garrett's posse? Oh yeah. I heard the shots and I knew I had to move fast. Garrett and his army of deputies had surrounded the entire homestead. They're coming from the rear! I decided to help Billy and the boys out a bit. So that's just what I did. Man, we have one behind us! Stay on it! 
As the governor of New Mexico was paying for the kid's apprehension, Garrett was able to hire every gun hand in Lincoln County. I knew that going through that front door meant putting my butt in a shooting gallery, so I decided to get sneaky. Chickens with their heads cut off. Still, one of them reached the water tower. Not a bad idea. It would be a turkey shoot from up there. These shooters Garrett hired weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. A lot of them were saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters looking to make a few bucks. <laughs> then, I heard a friendly voice yelling at me from the window. Back door! We'll cover you! Try aiming, you idiot! Truth be told, things weren't much better behind the house. I cut their numbers in half. But that just made the ones that were left twice as mad. They made up for their lack of skill with a seemingly endless supply of ammo. You're done. It was a bit of a slog, but I finally fought my way around the back of the house. And like that, I was dead, inside. None the worse for wear. I passed Dirty Dave, and upstairs I found Billy and Dead's Charlie Bouldry. Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo! Grab a gun and get to the window! <laughs> Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Anyway, we were surrounded by dozens of deputized shooters who wanted to do us harm. You Garrett's men were dropping like flies, but they just kept on coming. Shoot that 
That's when Charlie got hit. They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side. Many of those cocksuckers I personally put down, but it was pretty clear, even to Billy, that maybe discretion was the better part of valor. What's that mean? It means that it was time to cut and run. They got a gallon, Billy shouted. Get the horses and bring them round back. I'll draw their attention. He directed that order at me, and I thought, why the hell do I have to do it? Many would have fled in my place. But I had that false sense of invincibility that many young men have. Like Jack here. What are you saying, old man? Jack is just joshing with you. Yeah, he better be. Mr. Graves, please continue. Please, call me Silas, ma'am. Now, uh, where was I? You were heading for the barn. Gotta cut you a new one! of fallen foes. Sounds like Garrett hired a whole regiment of hired guns. Yeah, and just when I thought I was done with them, more of these hapless bastards would pop up. Finally, I had the stables within my reach. And that's when I met Sheriff Pat Garrett. I read that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked-on tin star. challenged him to a showdown. You read that in a dime novel? It said he showed no fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake. Killed him in a fair fight. <laughs> Is that what that Penny Dreadful said? No, boy. That ain't what I meant when I said I met Pat Garrett. So let me start again. I finally reached those damn stables. And 
stepped inside, and... <laughs> Last thing I heard was Garrett's voice. That's not Billy. And go on, how did it end? And, boy, that was just the beginning. So what happened? Did Garrett arrest you? Yeah, after I came to. The bastard had clocked me with his colt. And the kid surrendered? When he realized there was no getting out of there alive. So they locked you up in Lincoln? Indeed they did. Sentenced me to hang right along with the kid. It's important to know that I was only riding with Billy so I could find the bastard I was after. He was with John Kinney's gang, and they were sworn enemies of Billy's regulators. Why were you after him? I owed that son of a bitch a bullet for what he had done to me and mine. Instead, all I got for myself was a goddamn death sentence. Luckily, it was right around then that I heard Billy make his move. He shot Jim Bell and a few other guards as he made his getaway. Later, they wrote that some lady friend planted a pistol for him in the privy. What the papers didn't say is that Billy helped me escape too. My first order of business was finding a firearm. Luckily, I located Deputy Bob Ollinger's mean-ass shotgun. I saw Billy through the window and he yelled that I should take to the rooftops to make my escape. So I did. Anybody see Billy? That little son of a bitch shot me! <laughs> Hell yeah. That scatter gun was like a double-barreled howitzer. It could blow a man clear off his feet. You hardly had to aim the damn thing. Guards were everywhere looking for him. Can't let the kid get away! jump from roof to roof like a damn alley cat. I followed the planks where I could, but... Some of that wood was slippery as hell. The whole town was up in arms. And suddenly, I was a fugitive. So that bastard you were after, what did he do? He did me and my family a grievous harm. But I knew if I was ever going to find him, I would need to get my ever-loving ass out of there. I tried to be stealthy 
and sneak my way past. Oh, you! This town doesn't have a moment's faith. But hell if they weren't all waiting for me. Apparently, oh. some of them thought I was built. You heard this. shared a certain similarity in build and color. I was just glad I had Deputy Bob's mean-ass shotgun. So much lead was whizzing by my head, it was like everyone in Lincoln wanted to put me in the ground. I knew I needed to find a horse. Though I never did have a great fondness for those four-legged grass eaters. Smelly, sweaty, ungrateful beasts. With rising too high, you ask me. But where was the kid while you were busy getting shot at? Gone. And that's when it occurred to me why Billy set me free. So I could be a hapless decoy and draw attention while he snuck out of town. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one will put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No. Because they all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him. Meanwhile, Deputy Bob Ollinger was organizing a posse to put me down. He was already a mean son of a bitch, but he was doubly pissed that I stole his mean-ass shotgun. Stables on the edge of town. I guess Billy saved your ass, taking out Bob Ollinger the way he did. Billy didn't kill Bob. Well, sure he did. He dispatched him right after he shot Deputy Bell. No, sir. Because Bob came right up behind me, angry as hell that Billy had lit out. Hello, Bob. I said. I think you better let me go. And he says, I don't think so, boy. 
Not with my shotgun. So we stood there in the middle of the street, eyeball to eyeball. I killed him in a fair fight. Everybody saw I had no damn choice. Well, Lincoln got a mite depopulated that day. Pat Garrett gunned down Billy three months later, so his escape was all for naught anyway. So where'd you go after Lincoln? Mexico. Until I realized nobody was looking for me. I ended up taking a job at the Rurales. The Mexican Rurales? I was hired to help them track down the cowboys. The most vicious outlaw gang in Cochise County? Curly Bill Brocious, Johnny Ringo? Led by old man Clanton himself. They must have paid you a pretty penny to take them hombres on. Not really. But truth be told, I had my own reasons for going after those boys. So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! There! I did my best to help those poor passengers. Moments later, the attackers were dead. And I checked the stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks weren't hiding more bandits. Was that all of them? Or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. They attack from on high like Apaches often do. They would appear in great numbers from above and rain down lead on their hapless enemies' heads. Making use of the high ground and whatever else they have. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere. And there never seemed to be an end to them. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the Cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's Cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. See, at the time, I was still pretty green, but often blunder into regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. I didn't see Ringo, but I knew he was with the Cowboys. He and Roscoe Bob had done me a dreadful wrong, and I was determined to have my revenge. But to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to fight my way past these other assholes first. Unfortunately, I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up.
Finally, they managed to corner me. Trapped as I was, the odds of my survival seemed pretty slim. Luckily, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my predicament. I ran ahead as if the devil himself was after me. Bullets were whizzing by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. <clears throat> I just kept running like there was no tomorrow. Because there wouldn't be if Clanton and his men caught up with me. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking of going up against a gang like this? I just kept running, not knowing where the hell I was going. And that's when something miraculous happened. Like mana from heaven, I found the desiccated remains of what looked like an Apache warrior. The old weapon next to him supplied me with some much needed ammunition. Bat Masterson once told me it was more important to be lucky than good. And he would know. And imagine my surprise when I found a fistful of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune evened the odds and bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the predator. Time for the hunted to become the hunter. Time. <laughs> All right, Jesus, we get it. They were right where you wanted them. That's right, Jack. I was done running. And the old man's boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wildcat. My fury knew no bounds. It was finally time for that old man to pay for his sins. Let me tell you, that was the longest uphill climb of my entire damn life. Well, one of the longest. There was that one time I was pursuing Frank James, Jesse James' brother. Jesse James? Perhaps we could talk about that one later. Now where was I? Right. I had old man Clanton in my sights. Most everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon. But it was just me. 